Hi guys, how's it going? Rob at Groove User here again. And in this video, I want to show you how to set up a customer contact form on your Groove Pages website. Now, if, if you've been following along with the previous videos up until now, we've built this website here. We've we planned it out. Uh, we added the images in, then we've gone through and added the text, formatted the, the whole site. So we're almost ready to go. And what we want to do in this video is show you how to set this up so that the data the customer puts in actually gets sent on to the person who needs it. In this case, it would be the uh, company owner who can then get back to the client with uh, an answer to their inquiry. So to do this, we need to do a few things. So first of all, we'll go into our Groove Pages account and open up the website, which we've got in front of us here. And if you remember, I'll just recap how we created this uh, this contact form. It's basically a we've got a block, an image block in the background, and then we've got a container here which has got some text up here, and then all of the form uh, data has to be contained within a form container. So if I click on this here, you look down the bottom, you can see it says form container. Now that's basically everything within that form container is the information that is collected and then sent off so anything that's outside of that will not be uh, part of that so that's why we've got this form container and we got that from if we click on the left elements and then down in the form section you've got empty form so this was here was an empty form container and then we dragged into it a input label which are these labels up here and an input field which are these fields here that people actually type in there are a couple of options there is another option you don't actually need these uh, input labels if you don't want them i've put them in because this is what my client wants but you could also have um, instead of having those if you click on the actual input field and go to configure you can put a placeholder text in here um, so we could put name in there if I update that and you'll see in here we'll say name so you don't actually need to have that but in, like I say in this case this is what my uh, clients requested to have them uh, they like it clear like this so that, that's how we're going to do it in this example so a few things we need to do we're going to use uh, a service called Zapier to connect this form up and what that will do it will take the information that's put into each of these three fields when someone presses the request uh, contact button it will take that information and it will send it via email to an email address that we uh, that we put in so in this case for this test i'll put it to my own email address so that you can see how it works so the first thing to do is click on the actual form container if you're not sure how to do that you can uh, click on anything inside and go up until you're in form container you can click on it directly at the bottom here or you can use the up arrow until you're at it at the form container so if we go over to, when you're on the form container you go over to con configure in the right hand menu and the form action we're going to use an in integration uh, but if you look under integrations we haven't got anything available to us so what we need to do first is actually create our integration so up here in the uh, the hamburger menu, the three the three bars, <clears throat> if you click on that, and then you'll see my integrations. Click on there, and it will say you don't have any integrations yet if you haven't got any. So we're going to go add integration, and on the right hand side integration type, and the one we're going to use is right at the bottom. But you can see in here you've got if uh, you're already subscribed to any of these Active Campaign, Aweber. Um, get response any of these type of things mailchimp uh, any of these ones will work but in this example we're going to use zapier and the description we just need to give it a name a unique name for this particular uh, form that we've created so i'm going to call it the name of this uh, website click update and you see over on the left that's now given it a um, a name and it says that it, that basically shows that it's active so now it's there we can exit and that's that part done and the other thing we need to do is now that's there we can click on this container again now when we go to configure 
under integrations it's there so we can click on that the one we just created the name we've just typed in and you can choose when someone presses this uh, button it will come up with it will either uh, send them you can send them to another page so say if they'd made an order and you wanted to give them an upsell you could send them to another page you could send them to another block on this page so it will send them down to that block you could send them to another url altogether or you can set it to trigger a pop-up which you can create over here on the left uh, name it and then that pop-up will will be uh, available for you to select but in this case we're not going to do any of that so the main thing here make sure you're on the form container go to configure under integration select the one you just created under the my integrations tab up the top here and then click update so that's now telling us it, that's going to tell zapier to use whatever's in this uh, in this box basically the next thing we're going to go to our fields and we need to name these input ids we need to give them a name so quite simply this is for a name so we're just going to call it name and we're going to put that in both boxes update and what that's going to do is when zapier collects this information it will know what to call it it will say name is so and so and whatever it's been put in this box so we'll click on the email one and we'll just call that email and the same in the other box and you can choose to have a validation rules so if it's particularly for email you want to make sure someone's got the at symbol and the dot uh, com or whatever it is you can click that on there and you can choose the type of validation so in this case it's an email validation or an update so what that will do is if someone tries to enter an email address and it's not a valid email address it will tell them that they need to select they need to enter a valid email and we'll update that always remember to click update or it won't work and then under phone we'll do the same thing phone and phone and update and then the last thing we need to do, if we close that now, is we need to publish this site. So once that's published, we need to go to this actual website, the live version in a new window, like that. And then we'll just refresh that, make sure that it is the latest version. Go down to our form, and we need to put some information in this form uh, so that Zapier is going to look for it and find it. So the first thing we need to do is type a name in here. And you can see as I'm typing, this field requires a valid email address. So that's because of the uh, validation rule we applied. So as soon as I put in an email address, it's happy, you see? And then under phone, I'll just put in a random phone number. There we go. And I'll click request contact. Sending, and it says successfully sent. So that means that our form has collected data on our GrooveFunnels, uh, GrooveFunnels integration. So now we're going to go over to Zapier to set this up. And if you've never used Zapier before, you'll need to um, create an account. Uh, you get a 14 day free trial to see if, uh, obviously, see if it works for you, if it's the kind of thing you're going to use in your business. And I think if you want to continue after that, it's about $20 a month. Um, in this particular example for the website I'm building, that's what my client is going to use. Um, so that's why I'm setting it up this way. But you can use any of the other integrations in there, no problem. Um, or you can just use uh, GrooveMail if you're going to go down that route. It depends what type of business it is that you're working on. But this is just to show the example of how to configure the form in Groove Pages, like I said. So when you've logged in to Zapier, uh, or once you've registered, you need to click on this Make a Zap button at the top left. And the, what that's what they call a zap is what they call a little action if. Like when this happens, do this and then do this. You can create this sort of uh, chain of events. So the first event we're going to look for is to choose an app. It's going to be Groove, uh, Groove Funnels. So start typing in Groove, and you'll see it at the top there. Click on that, and the trigger event. 
you have to choose one of these, but there's only one option available to, to us in GrooveFunnels, that's new form submission, which is what we want. When someone makes a submission in the form, it's going to pick it up. So we click continue. The next thing you need to do is link your GrooveFunnels account to Zapier. If you haven't already done it, um, it'll just ask you to connect your account. You'll just sign in with your GrooveFunnels um, username and password, and then that will connect the two up together. So in this case, I've already done that. So I'm just going to select my account and then go continue. And then the integration, if you remember back in Groove Pages, we created the integration um, through the hamburger menu. You'll find that under here. There we go. So it goes and looks for it. I click on that and that's now selected. So what we're saying is when it finds this event in Groove Funnels, it's going to trigger this integration that we created. Okay. So now we need to test the trigger. So if you remember, we put in the dummy information in the uh, website, the live website. So if we click test trigger, it's going to go and find that now. And here you go. See already that's found the name, Paul Smith, email, paul at email.com and the phone number I put in. Now, if you see here, these three labels, name, email, and phone, they refer to the inputs that I put in over here in Groove Pages. Name, email, phone. So whatever you name these will come up in Zapier here. So we know that's okay. It's found the data. So we're going to click Continue over at Zapier. And now we're going to choose what it does with this information that it's collected. So in this case, we're going to use Gmail, you can do all sorts of different uh, options in here. But for this particular example, I'm going to show Gmail because we're going to use it to take that information and email it off to another address. So we're going to use email to send an email. We choose the email address and this refers to the email address that's actually going to be sending this data. Uh, it's going to be seen as coming from this, this email address. So I'm going to click continue. And now you can compose the email or what the email is going to look like. So I'm going to send it to myself just to show you uh, in this example. And then you can put the subject. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I like to do it this way actually so you can use this information that has been pulled from the website so if you click down here the name so whoever's name it is whatever information they put has made an inquiry on your website you don't have to use this but it's just nice if you're ever searching for that client again it can be useful you can type in their name and you'll find any correspondence you've had with them. So that's quite a good way to do that. So that's what the subject will say, and it'll be different whoever puts in the name there. Uh, the body type, you can choose whether you have plain or HTML. I'll leave that plain for now. And then the actual text, the main part of the email, the body, you have a new inquiry from... And underneath, you can just click on these, the name, the email, and the phone number. And that's what the email will say. And close that. And then click Continue. Then we can send a test email to test it. So let's do Test and Continue. So now if I go to my email, and there we go. Paul Smith has made an inquiry on your website. So this was the uh, the header that we put in, the subject we put in. The name here has made an inquiry on your website. You click on it, and then it comes up. You have a new inquiry from, and then its name is email and its phone number. So what you can do now, now that you've tested it and you know that it works, go back over to Zapier and then click Turn on Zap. And that's now enabled. So we can close that. Now we can go back to the uh, live website and do another one, make sure it works.
So let's put a different name in here. Different email address. And a phone number. Click request contact. It says successfully sent. If we go back over to our inbox. Let's refresh. There we go. Amy Smith has made an inquiry on your website and then we have the details. So that's about it. Once you've got that set up, you can you can put other fields in here. You can put um, if you go to elements in form, you've got more options down here. You can put text areas, uh, you can put check boxes, all of those sort of things. So it gives you a few more options. So that's it for now on this one. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can um, optimize our websites for different devices. So we'll look at this section up here. That's a thing a lot of people are having trouble with at the moment. So we'll dive into that and make sure that you've got the hang of that next time. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like. Feel free to leave any comments as well. If there's anything that you want covered in any future videos, get in touch at info at grooveuser.com. If you haven't yet got your free uh, Groove Funnels account, head over to grooveuser.com where you can grab that. And you can also look at the other Groove Funnels uh, softwares available. There's some pretty cool bonuses as well available on those. So, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe to our channel so you get up our future videos. There's lots more to come on not just Groove Pages, but Groove Funnels as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. And thank you for watching.